Welcome to this devotional time this morning. Glad that you are with us listening. Our scripture today comes from the book of Matthew. And this is the 7th chapter, the 7th through the 12th verse. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. The one who knocks the door will be open. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. This text today is um, the kind of the little title, if you will, is Ask, Seek, Not. It's reminding us to bring these things to God. You know, I think too often um, we're, we deal with a myriad of emotions and we have so much on our minds right now. It's hard sometimes to clear our heads and really focus and think about God. But this text um, is about asking for things. And it even equates that um, we as humans um, know how to give good gifts to our children. It even refers to us as evil in the sense. And I think what it's trying to get at right there is the fact that, you know, we are imperfect people. We are not God. You know, we make mistakes on a daily basis. And yet, even then, we know how to give good gifts well, how much better is the gifts from our Father in heaven? Because it says, which of you, if your son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, would give him a scorpion? Of course, that wouldn't happen. Um, and I think what is so important there is that we ask when we need things of God. You know, I think one of the most um despairing things that we could do is, you know, continue to wallow in our problems, just stay with our problems, but yet never take those problems to God. You know, if we wonder why we're never getting any help, maybe we should ask, are we asking for help? You know, because it's very easy for us to maybe be completely independent and not try to depend or look for others to help us. And maybe we need to ask, you know, the question, are we asking? Are we asking things of God? Are we asking things of each other? You know, one of the um, important things with fundraising is the ask, they call it. Uh, over the years, I've been to a number of fundraisers at times, and I think the last big one was shortly before the pandemic for United Church Homes and Services. And at that point in time, they did a ask where they are asking for money. And I was uh, amazed because I really wasn't at that point in time wanting to give that much. But after a, a very good speech, and a very nice asking, I felt myself becoming more generous than I had intended to be. And I wonder sometimes, how often do we deprive ourselves of some of these good things in life by simply not asking for them? How often do we deprive ourselves of God's blessings by not asking for them from God? You know, because God is going to provide for our needs in the same way that um, if one of our children asked us for some food, we are going to take care of that immediately. But wouldn't God take care of us with our needs? Maybe it takes a little sifting of 
what our needs and what our wants. But I think maybe too often we kind of see ourselves as a, a spiritual island. Because there's a, there's a safety in being an island. You know, if you react with no one, you can keep yourself from getting hurt. If you are on this island all by yourself, no one can affect you. However, with that same island mentality, there is no help. There's nothing but loneliness. And sometimes I feel like we wall our emotions because not only have we hurt people in the past, but we've been hurt by people. Not often do we reach out like we should and need to. And so we must focus on not being a part of that island, but being part of God's kingdom and acknowledging that we're heirs of God and that we're co-heirs with Christ and that we can help one another and that God is ready to be there for us if we just simply ask. The end of this teaching of Jesus says that this sums up the law of the prophets. That's a powerful thing for me is that, you know, knowing that if I ask something of God, that God will provide for my needs. That, you know, all we have to do is ask. Maybe I don't do enough time asking for the things that I truly need. Maybe I ask for the things that I don't need. Because how often do we pray that God's Spirit will dwell with us? That God's Spirit will guide us? You know, often before meetings, um, I or someone else will have prayer. And one of the things that is so key with that is when I'm the one who's doing the praying, I always like to have a prayer before any church meeting that, you know, that God will guide us in what we're doing. That we're not just independent on our own tangents, that we are truly following God's call and God's leadership for us. And that's such an important thing. Because if we think that we're a Christian, and that we're completely alone, then we're really not seeped in the word of God. Because the word of God teaches us that we are heirs with Christ, that we have God as our father, and we have humankind as our brothers and sisters, and we are not alone in our walk with through this life. And that's an important thing that I think that we need to acknowledge is that God is with us. And so my challenge for you today is this. Pray for God's will in your life. Pray for God's direction in your life. You know, over the years, you have some folks who've gotten mad at the church for one reason or another. And I've never heard a single person who was upset with something who said, well, I have spent a lot of time in prayer and talking with God and coming to this conclusion. In fact, it seems as if God has been left completely out of whatever the conflict may be. I don't know why that is, Maybe it's because people don't want to hear. Maybe they struggle with it, the idea that God is going to change them. But these are powerful promises to us in the gospel. And so I challenge you to this day to pray and ask and knock and seek. Because what does it say to us? For everyone who asks, receives. To everyone who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. 
periodically around my house, we lose things. Or when I say we, actually it's the children that loses things. And I'll say, have you looked for it? And they will look up and down and, and not really move or seek in the way that I'm wanting them to. Because I found as many times as we lose the remote, we have never left it on the ceiling. It doesn't really do that good to look up there. However, maybe in our walk with Christ, we need to look diligently. We need to seek with all of our energy and we will receive all of those blessings from Almighty God. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this day together and the fact that you're with us, leading us, and guiding us. Help us to serve you as best as we're able. In your name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of Almighty God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you, both now and forevermore. Amen.